Hey guys, I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm going to be making version 2 of the do-it-yourself concrete lamp and this one was a request from the audience. I also want to thank Audioblock for sponsoring this video. They have one of the largest stock audio library online with over 100,000 stock audio clips, loops, music, sound effects and I'll also have a link down in the video description for a 7 day free trial. This lamp is a bit larger than the one I previously made. This one stand at around 30 inches tall and about 7 inches in diameter. I did put a bit of a twist to this one so stay tuned and I'll show you just how I made it. To get started I'm going to take a piece of packing foam, form that into the shape of a cup, tape it and then cut out a circle, attach it to the bottom and this should be housed inside the concrete form. The next step I'm going to cut out a foam to fit inside the cylinder. To secure it in place I'm going to use hot glue, sit it inside and once the hot glue cooled down then I'm going to add hot glue along the top and that should create a tight seal. You may have to shop around to find a vase this big. I find mine at the local hobby store and this one measures around 24 inches in length with a 7 inch diameter. Now I'm going to trace the thickness of the base. Then I'm going to draw a second line of how thick I want the concrete to sit inside the vase. This piece is around 2 inches and the bottom would be around 5 inches. I'm using a metal flashing which you can pick this up at your local hardware store. And I'm going to take that, tape it around the outside of the vase. To shrink the inside of the concrete form, I'm going to use a 1 inch waterproofing seal and this should go around the inner part of the metal flashing. Wrap a string around the vase and where the two line intersect, that will be the circumference of your circle. Next, you'll place the rubber seal along the line that was drawn inside the flashing. But first, we need to find the distance around it. But if for some reason you can't find a string and all you know is math then you can times the diameter of the circle which is 7 inches in this case and then you can times that time 3.14 and that will give you the distance around the circle. And this is what it should look like after the first one but I'm going to apply a second one to make a thick 2 inches line. Next I'm going to take a piece of aluminum foil and trace out the outside of the vase, place the foam in the center and hot glue that down. The reason I traced the vase onto the aluminum foil is to hold the metal flashing. Being that it's flimsy, I'm going to need that circle to help me line it up. Next, apply hot glue to one side and hold it in place while it cools. Do the same thing on the opposite side and do it on four sides until it's sitting at a perfect circle. Then trace it all the way around with the hot glue. Next, it's time to mix the cement and any cement should work. Mixing the cement is pretty simple. All you need to do is apply a little water and mix the cement. You don't want it too watery and you don't want it too thick. Just follow the instruction on the back of the bag and that should get you a result pretty close to this. Use the hand shovel to place the cement inside the form and make sure you work it all the way around. Just mix small portions at a time and just try to keep it consistent as possible. I fill the form up to about a half inch below the top rim. The one positive about this metal flashing, it makes it very easy to vibrate the form and you can shake it and squish it and do whatever it takes to get the bubbles out. The more bubbles you relieve from the form, the smoother your form will be. And with about 4 days of sitting, I'm now going to remove the form from the concrete. I really like the concrete look but if you're not into the concrete look and you want to paint it then it's best to wait 28 days before you paint the concrete. Doing so will allow the concrete to breathe and get to its maximum strength. Now as I was removing the rubber stripping I realized I should have probably add tape between the two pieces of rubber stripping and that would have avoided this line going around. But it's not a big deal, I'm just going to break it off and sand it down the best I can. Look at that, the vase fit just right. Now remove the aluminum foil from the bottom and as you can see the inside looks pretty clean. Being that the vase fits perfectly, I'm not going to waste too much time sanding this area down trying to get it smooth. I'm just going to clean it up a bit so that it looks more presentable.
My neighbor cut down an oak tree in the backyard and I decided I'm gonna pick up a few of these branches because I know I'm gonna use these in a project and here we are. So the branches are pretty dry. I broke one just to check. They've been sitting around for about two months now. Apply some black paint and allow enough time for the paint to dry. And using a masonry bit, I'm gonna drill a half inch hole going all the way down to the opening in the bottom. Now place the branch in the hole and if it's too tight just take the bit and just wobble the hole out a little more because you need to be able to run the LED through the hole as well. Now place the glass on top of the branch just to make sure you have all the clearance going around because when you start adding the LEDs it's going to be trouble if you need to remove the glass again. Using the masonry bit I'm going to drill out a small pilot hole then I jump over to a much larger bit so that I can drill out a bigger hole. And within this hole I'm going to place the power plug. Now once the power plug is passed through, I'm going to take some hot glue, flood the hole, push the plug back in, and then run some beta glue around the outside. Tape off the LED power plug to prevent any dust from getting through, then pass it down to the bottom. Then connect that to the LED power controller. While I'm stuffing the LED into the vase, I'm going to take a few seconds to tell you about AudioBlock royalty-free stock audio service. Being a content creator, adding music sound effect is important for all online service such as YouTube, podcasts, and even filmmaking projects. All membership come with 100% royalty-free agreement. Sign up today at audioblock.com forward slash YouTube or click the link in the video description to get a free 7-day trial. During that time, you get access to the entire library, download as much as you like, and even if you cancel your membership, you're still covered when you choose your stock audio from Audioblocks. And we're back to the video. The felt pad I had was not big enough to cover the entire bottom, so I just cut a circle and placed that in the center. And here you have it, the finished product. So the cool thing about this lamp is the previous lamp I made before had an infrared receiver. This one is radio frequency. So as long as you're in the vicinity of the light, you don't even have to point it. It will still turn it on and off. So as you can see, I'm approximately 50 feet away and I can still turn the light on and off. I'm probably gonna make this one stay on my front porch or I may make a second one to put them both on my back porch. I love the way this lamp came out. I think it's good enough for accent lighting. The other lamp did really well and I hope we can top that one with this one. So if you guys like this project, I'd love to see 10,000 likes on this one. And don't forget to put your request in. I may get around to your project and you can also see your project come alive. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one.